Hello and welcome to this live session of the Chemistry Clinic brought to you by Boost Revision. We're continuing with our series on practical chemistry and in today's session we're going to be looking at setting up electrochemical cells in order to measure the standard cell potential. Now in terms of the practical detail and how to actually do such an experiment, um, there isn't a great deal of difficulty in setting up such a cell. I think the difficulty comes with an understanding or gaining an understanding of the theory underpinning electrochemical cells in terms of redox chemistry and in terms of equilibria. So I will spend quite a bit of time focusing on this aspect of, um, of, of, of the chemistry. Okay, so as usual, I will go through um, theory and I will then go through some uh, practice questions towards the end of the session. As usual, if there are any questions from uh, the audience, please use the chat um, function in uh, Zoom or use a chat function in YouTube to um, post questions to me and I will be pausing at various intervals to um, answer these questions for you. Before we start, I will share my uh, tablet screen with you and then we will get going. Okay, so we're looking at electrochemical cells. Of course, this is relevant to um, year 13 and anyone doing an A-level course uh, is in the second year. Okay, so um, to start with, we want to really understand the theory underpinning electrochemistry. And I think a good way um, to approach this is to consider the question we've got on our screen, um, which says, what happens when you place a piece of metal such as magnesium or copper into a beaker of water? Okay, so um, metal atoms on the surface of the metal um, can lose electrons and in so doing form ions. So in the, in, the, in the case on the left hand side, we've got um, magnesium metal, which is this metal strip here, and it has lost, um, or some magnesium atoms have lost electrons um, to form Mg2 plus ions, which dissolve in the water. And as a result, you've got electrons building up on the surface of the metal. Now, this process happens um, spontaneously. Now, the magnesium ions that have been formed um, will of course be attracted to the surface of the metal because there is a buildup of negative charge. Now as a result of being attracted to the surface of that metal, um, there is the possibility for these magnesium ions to gain an electron and become magnesium atoms again. Okay, so what we have here is a reversible process and an equilibrium will be reached as we do know with all um, uh, reversible processes. Okay, so you've got this equilibrium between magnesium losing electrons and forming Mg2 plus ions, and also the Mg2 plus ions gaining those electrons back to give you magnesium. Okay, now, if we wanted to measure the extent to which this happens, in other words, how far um, to the Mg2 plus and electron side the equilibrium lies, or how far to the magnesium atom side the equilibrium lies, we would need to measure um, this potential difference. Okay, so you can imagine a thought experiment where you connect your metal to your to a voltmeter and then connect um, another electrode to, um, to into the solution near where the Mg2 plus ions are. But this is very problematic and will not give you the actual potential difference. Okay, so it's not possible to measure the potential difference between the surface of the metal, which is negatively charged, and the solution um, directly. Okay, so the answer to the second question I've got on the page, which is down at the bottom here, the answer to that question is an emphatic no. Okay, so we will need to find a different way of, of measuring this um, electrode potential. Now, the other beaker has got a different metal. So this time around, we've got copper, and copper is doing the same thing, but not quite to the same extent as magnesium. Okay, so how do we know by how much difference there is in copper's ability to release electrons and from copper two plus ions compared to magnesium's ability to lose two electrons and um, to give you Mg2 plus ions. Okay, so we want to um, find a way of comparing these two electrodes. If it is impossible to measure the electrode potential directly by connecting your copper, copper metal to a voltmeter and then the other end to an electrode and sticking it into your copper sulfate solution um, or your, your, uh, your solution containing copper ions, then how are we going to go about doing this? And that is at the heart of um, the electrochemistry that you're doing 
in the second year of, a, of your A-level course and measuring um, electrode potentials um, and also calculating cell potentials using these electrode potentials. Okay, so let's have a look at how it's all done. Right, so let's look at the, um, the model I've shown on the left-hand side of the screen first of all. Okay, it's for a rather simplistic model, but I think it, it works quite well. Let's say that you've got two stick men. You've got Jim here with a frown on his face, and you've got Bob on the other side. And Jim and Bob are not allowed to be in the same room because they don't get along. And you want to measure the difference in height between Jim and Bob, right? What you would need to do if they can't be in the same room together, um, so for you to compare the, the, the heights and work out the difference, is to find a reference uh, person or a reference stick man that you can compare Bob's height to and that you can compare Jim's height to and then use that to work out what the difference is between Jim and Bob. So here's our reference stick man and that reference stick man has been given a height of two meters. So arbitrarily I've chosen two meters and that's the height of our reference stick man. You can go on to measure the difference in height between Bob and this stick man and there's Bob there and there's our reference stick man there and that difference in height is 0 0.2 meters so 20 centimeters and you can do the same exercise comparing the reference stick man to Jim and finding out that in the, in the case of Jim, Jim is shorter than the reference stick man by 40, um, uh, 40 uh, centimeters or 0 0.4 meters. So, so the minus sign here is suggesting that Jim is shorter. Um, over here, you've got plus 0 0.2 suggesting that Bob is shorter. So without, but Bob is taller, I should say. So without um, having Jim and Bob in the same room, but having a reference person, you can work out that the difference between um, Bob and Jim's height is actually that 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 uh, meters there. So 0 0.6 meters altogether, 60 centimeters. Okay, so Bob is taller by Jim um, by 60 centimeters. And we've done this without having the two of them in the room. Now that is the same idea we need to apply if we're going to measure the potential difference um, between our magnesium and its ions, that's a, between this electrode here and the copper electrode here. Okay, so we would need a reference electrode. Okay, so just as we've got a reference stick man here, we would need to find a standard whose electrode uh, potential is arbitrarily set and to which all other electrodes are going to be um, measured against. Okay, so our reference stick man is our reference electrode. And this electrode here is the standard hydrogen electrode. So we need a standard and hydrogen has been chosen to be our reference electrode. Now the standard hydrogen electrode is fairly uh, simple to illustrate. You've got hydrogen gas, which is being um, passed into this chamber. And within that chamber, you've got a piece of platinum wire, which is a conductor, obviously. And that platinum wire ends there with um, a piece of platinum foil at the very end, which is coated in even more platinum, porous platinum, okay? Now, the platinum is porous to allow your hydrogen gas to infuse into the cores and also to allow H plus ions, which are dissolved in this solution here, to inter interact with the hydrogen gas. So you've got an equilibrium established between H plus ions, 2H plus, and hydrogen gas. Okay, so that's the equilibrium that is being um, established. Now, if you think back to the electrodes I showed you before, we've got um, an equilibrium between magnesium ions and magnesium, or copper ions and uh, copper. In this standard hydrogen electrode, we've got an equilibrium established between H plus ions and hydrogen gas. Okay, so the other thing you'll notice is the way these um, half equations, these redox half equations are written. Okay, if we go back to the previous page, you'll see that the um, half equation is written as a reduction. In other words, the electrons are always on the left hand side. Now, this is convention and it is 
important that you always stick to this convention if you're going to um, work sort of effortlessly through the calculations that accompany these um, electrochemistry um, or electrochemical cell uh, uh, sort of uh, questions. So always have the electrons on the left hand side because it's the convention and it also makes your understanding of um, the, pro, uh, the, 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 the of, of, of of changes, for, for instance, to um, concentrations and how that affects the equilibrium, it makes your explanation a lot easier um, to, to come up with. Okay, so this is our reference electrode again, your standard hydrogen electric. Now, why is it um, referred to, or why is the, that, that word standard in the name of the hydrogen electric? Well, that's because um, if you're measuring other um, if you're comparing uh, the, uh, or measuring the uh, electrode um, uh, potential um, of any other electrode against the standard hydrogen ele electrode, you do need to do it under standard conditions. Okay, so you've got these being 298 Kelvin, which is um, 25 degrees Celsius, that's what chemists take to be room temperature, and atmospheric pressure, which is 100 kilopascals. Okay, so that's very important. The third condition for this to status for this to satisfy um, uh, sort of, uh, the, the, the conditions needed for measuring the standard um, electrode potential of, a, of another electrode is that the, the concentration of your um, H plus ions in solution must be one mole per decimeter cube. Okay, so these are the standard conditions: two nine eight Kelvin, one hundred kilopascals, and we also need one mole per decimeter cubed of um, your um, H plus ions for the standard hydrogen electrode. Whatever you're hooking up to your standard hydrogen electrode, and I've got a diagram down um, at the bottom of the, in the bottom right hand corner of the page. Um, here's what you would need to do to measure the electrode potential for magnesium. So you've got your standard hydrogen electrode on the left hand side. And that is always the case. So the standard electrode against which you're measuring electrode potentials of other electrodes must always be written on the left-hand side. Okay, so let's make a note of that. Um, standard hydrogen electrode is by convention by convention, always on the left-hand side. Okay, so we've got our standard hydrogen electrode on the left, and we've connected that electrode to our magnesium electrode. Now note that we've got a voltmeter in our um, connection there. Now the voltmeter has a very high resistance, and that stops current flowing. Okay, so we've got a high resistance and so there's no current flowing. And what we're measuring therefore is the difference um, or, or the, the force that would be pushing electrons round one way or another. Okay, so therefore measuring potential difference. The EMF is known as the electromotive force, the force that would be pushing electrons around our circuit. Okay, so we need uh, a high resistance voltmeter in our uh, circuit. And then, of course, the, um, your conducting uh, wire is connected via a crocodile clip to your piece of magnesium. And that piece of magnesium is in a solution um, containing magnesium ions, and concentration has to be one mole per decimeter cubed of um, magnesium ions. Okay, so that is very important if we're going to be measuring the standard um, uh, cell uh, uh, potential or the potential difference between our standard hydrogen electrode and our magnesium electrode. Now, to complete the circuit, we need a salt bridge. So we've got a salt bridge here that joins the two beakers, that joins the two electrodes so that we've got a complete circuit. Now the salt bridge allows current to flow um, through the circuit. Okay, so the salt bridge will contain, um, uh, it's, it's, it can often be the filter paper soaked in 
potassium nitrate. Now, um, the nitrate and potassium ions are not going to establish their own equilibria in this circuit. So um, they're not going to interfere with our measurement of, of the potential difference. They just simply allow um, current to flow by the, 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 the potassium and certain nitrate ions moving between the two, um, between the two uh, electrodes. Okay, so um, that is how you would measure the electrode potential of our magnesium. So this setup measures the electrode potential of magnesium. Okay, and the way we obtain this value of minus 2.37 uh, volts is by connecting your magnesium electrode to the standard hydrogen electrode. Okay, so in this instance, we've got a negative value for the cell, um, uh, the cell potential or the electric potential in this case of our magnesium. Now that is telling us that the magnesium is better at losing electrons to form magnesium ions. And so there's more electrons building up on the surface of our magnesium than there are um, on the other side with our hydrogen electrode. As a result of this, the electrons are going to flow from the magnesium to the hydrogen electrode. Now, only if we remove the voltmeter, of course. Okay, so. So the negative sign is telling us that the magnesium electrode will lose um, electrons to the standard hydrogen electrode if we allow a current to flow. Okay, so that's how you would measure the, um, the uh, electrode potential. Okay, so um, if you repeat this experiment, um, but change the magnesium electrode to a different electrode, say the copper electrode or any other um, uh, redox half equation or half cell, um, you could then come up with a table of electrode potentials. And once you've got a table of electrode potentials, you can then compare all these electrodes to each other and begin to say which would lose electrons uh, more easily. Okay, so in other words, if we look at our reference um, stick man again, and we look at lots of different people, so not just Bob and Jim, but uh, let's say everyone else in, um, in, in a population of, of, of stick men, and every one of those stick men is compared to our reference stick man, what you will get would be a series of um, height differences all measured re relative to the stick man. And once you've got that information, you can get rid of your stick man and just compare these relative differences and that allows you to work out um, in your population which uh, stick men are, are tallest and which are shortest. Okay, so that's something we'll be looking at very shortly when we look at tables of potential, um, electrode potentials. Okay, so um, moving on to our, our electrodes. So we've seen a couple of examples um, so far. So we've seen um, an example of a metal um, in equilibrium with its metal ion. So the example would be the magnesium and magnesium ions um, in solution. Okay, so you've got magnesium losing electrons to become magnesium ions, magnesium ions gain electrons to become magnesium and an equilibrium is established between the two. Okay, so that's one type of electrode. Now, another type of electrode is one that we've seen in the, the form of the standard hydrogen electrode, where you've got um, a non-metal, in this case hydrogen, um, in equilibrium with its um, ion, so H plus ion, so non-metal and its um, non-metallic non ion, obviously. Um, and the two um, have electron transfer between them mediated by this um, platinum wire. The platinum wire is chosen because it's very conductive 
but inert. So it isn't going to form its own um, redox um, sort of half um, equational uh, redox potential that would interfere with our measurement. So peak platinum is inert. Okay, so that's why it is chosen. So you can have um, a non-metal um, in equilibrium with its iron, and you can also have um, metal ions in different oxidation states in equilibrium with each other. So if we take Fe2 plus um, and Fe3 plus, you can have them in equilibrium with each other. And again, the transfer of electrons uh, backwards and forwards between Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus and going back the other way will have to pass through um, your platinum um, electrode here. Okay, so again, that would be mediated by um, an, an inert platinum electrode, which can pass electrons between um, the different species. Now, if we connect any um, two electrodes together um, in the way that we saw with our standard hydrogen electrode and our magnesium electrode, what we have is a cell. Okay, so if we look at this uh, diagram here, you've got a cell um, formed between a magnesium electrode on the left hand side and a copper electrode on the right hand side. Okay, so um, we're told here, and I will highlight this, the cell is formed, so the cell is essentially formed when two electrodes are connected um, together to form a complete circuit. Okay, so as you can see in our diagram, you've got our two electrodes connected via um, this conducting a uh, uh, conducting wire. Um, you do have a voltmeter here um, to measure the potential difference. And you've got a salt bridge here to complete the circuit. Okay. In the absence of the voltmeter, um, electrons will flow from the more negative electrode to the more positive electrode. So um, again, worth noting, so electrons will flow from the more negative electrode to the more positive electrode. Okay, so um, that is true for all cells that you build. Okay, so let's look at um, let's look at some uh, some other details about this um, cell. So if you connect these two uh, uh, electrodes together to form the magnesium um, copper cell, what you can do then is measure the the cell potential. Okay, so um, in other words, the potential difference between the magnesium and the copper cell. And to do this, you've got to do it under standard conditions. So if you were carrying out this experiment, you would take um, your a strip of magnesium and into a beaker, let's say a 100 centimeter cube beaker, you would put a solution of uh, magnesium ions, um, say magnesium sulfate perhaps, um, but you've got to be careful that your concentration is exactly one mole per decimeter cube of your magnesium um, ions so that you now have a, an equilibrium established between magnesium metal atoms and magnesium ions in your solution, okay? In the other beaker, another 100 centimeter cube beaker, um, containing uh, copper two plus uh, solution, uh, uh, copper two plus ions in solution, um, again, making sure that the concentration is one mole per decimeter cubed, so one mole per decimeter cubed, copper two plus um, aqueous, and, you've got your Cu um, metal um, dipped into that solution so that you've got an equilibrium established between your um, copper and copper two plus. Okay, so that's your other electrode. You're going to connect the two um, via a conducting lead, um, crocodile clips attached to the metals there and there, and then a salt bridge, filter paper soaked in potassium nitrate and dipped into uh, both uh, uh, beakers, and that will set up your cell, and your um, voltmeter should give you a reading. Okay, so um, we can work out what this um, cell potential should be, and uh, sort of compare that to the reading of a voltmeter. So uh, we know that the electrode potential for uh, magnesium is minus two point three seven. Remember, we measured it from our standard hydrogen electrode. Let's actually highlight that fact. So these are standard from, from the standard hydrogen electrode.
Okay, so we know what the electro potentials are. Now, because we know that the electrons will always flow from um, the more negative to uh, the, the, the less negative or more positive electrode, uh, we can predict in what direction um, the, the, the um, electrons will flow if we remove our voltmeter. Okay, so in the circuit we've got um, shown on the screen, if we get rid of the voltmeter, the electrons will go from the magnesium electrode, which is our negative electrode, to the copper electrode. So that would be the direction of flow of our, um, of our um, electrons. And we can, calculate, um, uh, we can calculate what the cell potential is, and I'll show you how to do, do this very shortly. But another thing to point out, in drawing your circuit diagram and insert, in, in setting up your circuit to measure the um, cell uh, potential, is that you need to always have the negative electrode on the left-hand side. Again, this is convention, which if you follow, will allow you to um, get your calculations right 100% um, of the time. Okay, so always have the more negative electrode on the left-hand side. The only exception is if you've got your um, electrode connected to a standard electrode, whether the standard hydrogen electrode or another standard, and there are a number of other standards you can use. At A level, we only consider the standard hydrogen electrode. Um, so the only exception is um, where you've got the standard hydrogen electrode connected, which should be on the left hand side. Okay, so always follow that convention. So how do we calculate the cell potential for the magnesium copper cell? So here's what we're going to do then. So it's always the right hand electrode, so the more positive electrode, minus the left hand electrode okay so left hand electrode is the magnesium electrode that's going to be subtracted from the right hand electrode of course the copper electrode okay so the standard cell potential uh, so again on standard conditions 298 kelvin 100 kilopascals one more per decimeter cubed um, for your ions in solution um, and right hand electrode, so the positive electrode or more positive electrode minus the left hand electrode. And that should give you the cell potential um, shown here. So we've got um, our E of cell being equal to 2.71 volts in this case. So we've measured the standard cell potential. Okay, so we've got magnesium sending electrons around to the copper electrode because the magnesium electrode is more negative. Okay. And down at the bottom of the page is another way of looking at things. Okay. So if we um, perhaps make things a little bit smaller, there we go. So we've got here um, uh, so the, the um, standard hydrogen electrode as our reference, okay? So I'm gonna highlight that there. So there's your standard hydrogen electrode. And then we've got to um, compare, so in this case, in our, in our cell, we've got the magnesium um, electrode, the Mg and Mg2+, plus, and our copper electrode, which is Cu and Cu2+. Plus. And we've connected these two electrodes together. Now, we know the um, um, electrode uh, potential for the magnesium is minus 2.37. So this is minus 2.37 when measured against your standard hydrogen electrode there. Okay, so minus 2.37. And we know the electrode potential for the copper electrode is plus 0 0.34. So that's plus 0 0.34 in the other direction. Okay, now we know that because the magnesium electrode is the more negative electrode, therefore electrons are going to flow from our magnesium electrode to our copper electrode. If we want to measure the or calculate the cell potential um, for our magnesium copper cell, then it is this gap here between the two. Okay, so again, right hand electrode, 0 0.34 volts minus the left hand electrode, which is minus 2.37, so minus and minus becomes plus and therefore we have 2.71 volts. Okay, so that's another uh, sort of uh, schematic for explaining um, what's going on. 
Okay, so if we then look at um, the table of um, electro potentials, you can see that you've got quite a comprehensive list here. And really start from the bottom right, um, looking at sort of some of the most negative electro potentials you'll have um, and some of the most uh, negative electrodes you can find. Um, and then you can see that they get more and more uh, positive or less and less negative as we go up the screen until you get to your standard hydrogen electrode, which is, of course, set by convention to zero volts. OK, so that's our standard. We've chosen that to be our standard. And so that is zero by definition. And then um, we've got electrodes that are more positive than the standard hydrogen electrode. So again, going from the bottom up, we've got so, um, a silver chloride um, um, electrode. You've got sort of iodide, iodine electrodes. And these are all getting increasingly more positive as you go, as you go up that um, table and up the screen. Okay, so at the very top, you've got the most positive electrodes here. Okay, and so you can read these uh, very positive electrodes as ones that do not, um, that are very uh, sort of, uh, in other words, the equilibrium lies very much to um, the right hand side rather than the left hand side. So the fluoride iron is going to struggle to release electrons. We can say um, very sort of oxidizing, if, if, if you can put it that way, very reluctant to um, release electrons. Whereas down here, in the bottom right of our table with a very negative electro potential. You've got lithium being very good at losing electrons to form lithium ions and um, electrons building up on the surface of your lithium. So that's um, how to interpret these um, tables of uh, electro potential. Now, I've got a couple of questions that we can work through. Um, it says to calculate the cell potential for the following. Um, we've got a zinc electrode and a copper electrode. Um, so what we need to do is find zinc in our table. And the zinc electrode is down there. And you can say that's got minus 0 0.76. And we need to find our copper electrode, copper, copper 2 plus, which is down there somewhere. So that is plus 0 0.34. And so There we go. Okay. And then um, going down to, um, to then uh, decide um, how to um, calculate the cell potential. Remember, you would always have the, uh, um, you'd have your uh, more negative electrode on the left hand side and your more positive electrode on the right hand side when you set it up. And that it's always right hand minus left hand. So we annotate our so this would be the more negative electrode. So that would be our left hand side. And our more positive electrode down there would be our right hand side. Okay, so E of cell the cell a potential would be right hand minus left hand so right minus left and that would be 0 0.34 minus minus 0 0.76 okay and that should be 0.34 plus 0.76 gives us 1.1 Exactly. Okay, so that's how you would calculate the cell potential. Um, if we look at the second example there, we've got the lithium electrode, which we know to be minus 3.05. And we've got the bromine and bromide electrode, which we need to find. Okay, so that's your bromine bromide electrode shown there. It's so 1.09 volts plus 1.09 volts. And like that there. And again, it's a right-hand electrode minus uh, left-hand electrodes, E of cell, 
right hand minus left. The right hand electrode is going to be your uh, positive electrode. So that's going to be 1.09 minus minus 3.05. Okay, and that gives us Four point one four volts. Okay, so that's how you would calculate the cell potential um, for any uh, pairings of um, electrodes that you're given. Okay, so always have the more negative electrode written on the left hand side, the more positive electrode on the right hand side, and then it's always right minus left. Okay, so that's uh, uh, something you want to stick to rigorously. Good. Okay, so um, another thing that you can, you can be asked to consider is to um, use um, uh, so data from the electrode potential tables to say whether um, a, a reaction, a cell reaction would proceed at all, um, whether the electrons would go in one direction or the other, to say which way um, the, the, the chemical reaction happens, which way is feasible. Okay, so the cell potential tells us about the feasibility of a reaction and whether a current will flow in the direction being suggested. But if you calculate the cell potential and it comes out as positive, then you know that as described, the, yeah, the, the reaction will happen, okay? Um, and that the reverse will not um, be possible. Okay, so let's have a look at such a, a situation. So we've got the magnesium and copper electrodes. Again, we've got the electrode potentials for both of these um, given to us. So could always look this up in the table and we're asked to say which reaction is feasible in other words we're being asked to compare this reaction where magnesium is reducing um, copper 2 to copper and magnesium itself is oxidized and 2 plus or whether copper can reduce magnesium 2 plus to magnesium and copper itself be oxidized to copper 2 plus which of these two reactions will actually happen? Well, the way to do that, the way to find out which would happen is to calculate the cell potential um, as described for the reaction in question. Okay, so if we are saying that magnesium is giving electrons to copper, then magnesium must be the more negative electrode, right? Okay, so the more negative electrode is going to be um, on the left-hand side, the more positive electrode, so the copper um, electrode would be on the right hand side. So right minus left, so we're saying right hand minus left hand gives us plus 2.71, okay? If we look at things um, the other way around, where we're saying copper is giving electrons to magnesium, we become Mg there, so we're saying that copper is more negative, then um, it's going to be right hand minus um, right hand minus left hand electrode. So it's going to be um, minus two point three seven minus zero point three four, and that will give us a negative cell potential shown here. Okay. Now, if we get a negative cell potential, that means that the reaction is not feasible. Okay. So. In terms of feasibility, we've got positive therefore Ng will reduce C to plus. Whereas here we've got negative therefore Cu cannot reduce mg to plus. And this tallies with our observations from GCSE, where we know that magnesium will displace um, copper from a solution of copper 2 plus or copper sulfate uh, solution, but copper will not displace magnesium from a solution of magnesium ions. Okay, so that is the sort of electrochemical basis for that observation we made way back at GCSE. Okay, so that's something important to, to note there. So the sign of our cell potential tells us 
if our reaction is going to be possible. So if it's positive, um, in the case of magnesium plus copper two plus, then that will happen. If it's negative, copper and magnesium two plus, it won't happen. Okay, so um, another way um, of describing what we've just shown is that um, if you have a, an ammeter here, we can measure the current. Um, what we are saying is that the electron will flow um, in this direction from magnesium to um, our copper. Okay, so um, our magnesium will react with copper two plus ions um, to form Mg, uh, Mg two plus and Cu. Okay, so that's um, that's the that's the the, the, the sort of an application of um, calculating um, cell potential. Now the going to finish our theoretical work by looking at the hydrogen fuel cell. And um, again, uh, so very briefly, so we can have a go at some uh, actual exam question. The hydrogen fuel cell is uh, sort of, uh, incredibly important um, as far as securing uh, a carbon um, sort of free um, sort of future when it comes to um, energy. And it combines the um, hydrogen electrode with um, the uh, oxygen electrode to produce water as, as the um, only byproduct and electricity as a result. Okay, so you've got your hydrogen electrode shown here. Um, so you've got um, an equilibrium between H plus ions and um, hydrogen gas. Okay, and on the other side, we've got so the more positive electrode, you've got water in equilibrium with H plus ions and oxygen. Okay, so how does the um, hydrogen fuel cell work. You're going to get hydrogen flowing into your cell this way. And as you can see there, the hydrogen um, is going to um, lose electrons. We know that it's the more negative electrode. And so the electro electrons are going to flow from our hydrogen electrode. And in, in your hydrogen losing electrons, you're going to form H plus ions. These H plus ions are going to diffuse across to our cathode. The electrons are going to pass out of our, um, our cell um, via an external um, sort of conducting uh, sort of wire over to uh, the cathode where they arrive. And over on that side, they're, they're picked up by oxygen and H plus um, here to give us water, which is our byproduct. Okay, so in, in, in a sense, we're combining these two, um, these two electrodes here to give us um, a, a means of uh, producing electrical energy and, um, and, and, and to, with a, a clean uh, byproduct in water. So let's, look, let's quickly combine the two uh, uh, half equations to see what the overall equation is. So you've got our, so we've got our, our more negative electrode, which is, um, our standard hydrogen electrode here. And because it is the, the, the electrode that is more negative and is therefore sending electrons around, we're going to write that or reverse the sign there. So we're going to write it as H2 going to two H pluses and two E minuses. And we've got the more positive electrode uh, receiving um, electrons, so if we're going to keep that as it is. So we've got four E minuses and four H pluses and oxygen going to two moles of water. Okay, now as you can see, um, so the keen eyed amongst you, this is producing two moles of electrons, but that requires four moles of electrons. And so you would need to multiply that by two. Okay, so overall, you're going to have two moles of H2, and that is going to react with um, that is going to react with oxygen to produce two moles of H2O. Okay, now you may wonder why I've left out the electrons and um, H pluses, but well, if we look at 
that two times two electrons there, that gives us four electrons on the right hand side. So we would have plus four E minus there and plus four E minus here. Of course, the two cancel out, so um, there's no point writing them. And then you've got four H pluses here. And if you've got two times two H pluses, you're going to have four H pluses here as well and four H pluses there. So the two again cancel out. So what this cell does is carry out a reaction between hydrogen and oxygen, okay? Harnesses the electrical energy being, uh, uh, being produced as a result of the current flowing from the anode, so the hydrogen electrode, to the cathode, uh, the oxygen electrode. And we can use the energy um, from these electrons to um, run um, to various components in this case, uh, you could have a, a light bulb, say, or you could even sort of, um, have a, a motor of some description. Okay, so a very important technology uh, for producing clean um, energy. Okay, so let's uh, finish things off by looking at um, by looking at an actual uh, uh, practice exam question. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at uh, question twenty one from. Uh, June 2018 A-level um, paper one and this question uh, is of course entirely on electrochemistry. It starts off with um, a bit of the fundamentals of atomic structure and electronic configuration um, being asked to say um, what the um, electronic configuration for um, nickel is. The nickel has um, an atomic number of 28 so um, how do we um, fill the shells to have 28 electrons for a nickel atom? You've got 1s2, and then you've got 2s2, 2p6, and then you need to move on to the three um, energy level, so 3s2, 3p6. Okay, so we're so far up to 18, we've got another 10 to go. You can write the 4s in first, 4s2, and then you can go to 3d8 or 3d8. 4s2, uh, it doesn't matter which way around. Okay, so that's um, nickel. And if we're looking at the, uh, the ion, which has lost two electrons, we're going to have 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And we're going to lose electrons from the 4s, um, both of the 4s electrons. So you're going to have 3d8 as our uh, nickel ion. Okay, so that's our electronic configuration for nickel 2 plus. In part B, we're asked to um, set up um, a standard cell uh, to measure the, the cell potential for the reaction between nickel and iodine. So we're looking at nickel and iodine, we're looking at this electrode here, and we're looking at the iodine iodide electrode there. Okay, so that's the more negative electrode, that's the more positive electrode. So can draw the nickel um, electrode on the left hand side. So you have a beaker and you would have your solid nickel. And you would have in your beaker, you'd have nickel two plus ions, aqueous. And that, of course, would be one mole per decimeter cube. And you would connect your nickel electrode via a voltmeter to the, um, your iodine iodide electrode. Now the iodine is dissolved in water as well as the iodide um, ion. So we've got platinum electrode here. Label it as such. It's platinum. And in our solution, we've got aqueous iodine and aqueous iodide, and again, one mole per decimeter cubed, one mole per decimeter cubed, and of course we need a salt bridge, label that. Salt bridge is of course aqueous potassium nitrate. Okay, and standard conditions, um, to be 298 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals and that should allow us to measure the um, uh, standard cell uh, potential 
um, for this particular reaction between nickel, solid nickel, and I'd, um, aqueous iodine to give us um, aqueous nickel, 2 plus, and um, uh, aqueous iodide, the fine ones. Okay, so that's a, a pretty straightforward uh, application of what we've just been um, learning to, to that exam question. Okay, so let's look at the next question then. Uh, it says predict the standard cell potential of this cell. Okay, so the standard cell potential, as we said, is um, so the electrode potential of the right hand. Um, minus the electrode potential of the left. Okay, so that is going to be equal to, so if we go back one page, um, so for the right hand, um, the iodide, um, iodine, it's 0 0.54, 0 0.54 minus uh, for our nickel, it's minus 0 0.25. Okay, so 0 0.54 plus 0 0.25, Zero point seven nine is our answer. Okay, so that's again relatively straightforward. And then we're asked to use the, the information in Table twenty one point one to help you answer both parts of this question. So let's write the overall equation for the oxidation of Fe two plus by acidified hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so let's look for the relevant um, electrodes then. So we're looking for Fe two plus. And there we go, Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. And we've got hydrogen peroxide, acidified hydrogen peroxide. There we go. And so those are the two relevant half equations we need to think about. Okay, so um, one of these is more negative than the other, so um, or less positive, so plus 0 0.77 versus plus 1.78. Okay, so we need to use these two. So let's have a go at writing uh, uh, an overall equation. Then. So because your Fe2 plus, um, Fe3 plus is more uh, negative, your um, equilibrium is going to lie much more in that direction for this electrode. This is going to be the negative electrode. So electrons are going to go from Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. Okay, so if we write that, rewrite that half equation, we're going to write Fe2 plus going to Fe3 plus plus an electron, and the other electrode um, will keep the half equation the same. So H2O2 plus two H pluses plus um, two electrons going to H2O, two H2O we should be. Okay, so we can immediately see that this half equation is producing um, one mole of electrons, whereas this half equation needs two moles of electrons. And so we would need to multiply the top equation by two to provide the right number of electrons. Okay, so once you've done that, you should be able to then write the overall equation so that would be um, two Fe2 pluses plus H2O2. And that's also going to have H plus involved, acidified, going to two moles of Fe3 plus and two moles of water. And we can very quickly check that everything's as it should by looking at the charges. We've got three plus times two, so that's six pluses altogether. We've got two pluses plus another two by two, four pluses, the six pluses on the left hand side as well. Okay, so that's your overall equation in red. And then finally, um, looking at part two of our, uh, our question, it says zinc reacts with acidified dichromate ions to form uh, chromium two plus ions in two stages. Okay, so this is very important to bear in mind in two stages. Explain why this happens in terms of electrode potentials. We're going to be quoting electrode potentials and equilibria. Okay, in other words, in which direction um, does the 
equilibrium lie uh, more or in other words what's being reduced and what's being oxidized or what's reducing aging and what's the oxidizing agent okay so all of these are relevant um, uh, points to put into your answer uh, we're also asked to include overall equations for the reactions which occur okay so zinc reacts with acidified um, potassium dichromate so if you look at um, the relevant electrode potentials there we go there's zinc and then we've got dichromate there so zinc is, is the more um, negative electrode so um, let's uh, show it using electrons okay so we can go down and say zn going to zn2 plus plus two electrons and we're going to be um, pairing that up with dichromates, the CR2072 minus. And that would be acidified. Uh, how many H pluses would that be? Uh, that would be 14 H pluses. And six electrons going to two, going in three pluses and also seven moles of water. Okay, so um, again, we can see that um, you've got two moles of electrons being produced by the zinc, but six moles of electrons being acquired by the dichromate. So we need to multiply the zinc electrode by um, three in this case, so that we've got the right number of electrons. And then the overall equation becomes apparent. So you've got three moles of zinc plus Cr2O7 two minus plus 14 H pluses. And that's going to give you three moles of Zn2 plus. And you're also going to form two moles of Cr3 plus and you're going to have seven moles of water. Okay, so this is the more negative electrode, the zinc electrode is, the more negative electrode. Therefore, we'll have equilibrium gravity. We'll lose electrons to Let's rewrite that. We'll lose electrons to CR2072 minus. Okay, and then once you've formed your um, CR3 plus, so this species here, you can see that that CR3 plus species is still more positive than our zinc. Um, electrode and so it can be reduced further by the zinc okay so again we can look at um, zinc reducing our CR3 plus so zinc to Zn2 plus again plus two electrons and we've got our CR3 plus and our CR3 plus is going to CR2 plus and that would our CR three plus would need to gain an electron. Okay, so if we look at the half equation there, yep, yeah, it does gain an electron, and we need to multiply that by two. And so overall equation again would be Zn plus two CR three pluses going to Zn2 plus plus two Cr2 pluses. Okay, so we can again double check that our charges are balanced. We've got two plus and okay, we've got four plus there, so six pluses. We've got six pluses on this side. So that's the, uh, the second um, equation. And again, um, zinc is more positive, um, and so you've got the so zinc is a more negative, I should say, more negative electrode. So we'll reduce CR3 plus. Okay, so 
Um, in terms of um, all the different uh, points we need to cover, um, we've looked at two stages. So we've looked at the initial reduction of RCR207 by zinc. And then the second stage, um, the reduction of RCR3 plus by zinc again. Okay, so um, two stages and we formed RCR2 plus. Um, explain why this happens in terms of electrode potentials. We have said that that is more, the more negative electrode, that is the more negative electrode. Um, and in terms of equilibria, in other words, saying what will reduce what. So the equilibrium lies very much to the ZN2 plus 2E9 side, um, same in, in this case as well. So we've covered all the bases to get four marks. Um, now that's been quite a, a, a whirlwind tour of electrochemistry and ideally you want to sit down and tackle some more practice questions to um, implement the conventions that, that we've discussed. So writing the negative electrode down on the left hand side, um, unless it is uh, connected to the standard hydrogen electrode, or we're sticking to right hand electrode minus the left hand electrode, um, always ensures that you get the correct um, cell potential calculation. Um, explaining things in, things in terms of equilibria. So a more negative electrode means that the equilibrium for that half equation will lie very much to um, the side where the electrons are. In other words, it's going to be releasing electrons to the less um, negative electrode. Okay, so these are all things you need to put into practice and suggest that you do go away and tackle some more practice questions. It's been a pleasure to um, go through this topic with you and I look forward to uh, seeing you again um, next uh, lesson. Thank you very much.